This is the Awakening Word brought to you by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi, the president of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated and overseer of the Redemption Faith Churches. So when I say to you most time, nothing encourages a man like answers to prayer. It's an amazing truth. And I'm sure today you will experience answers to prayer. Reverend Ajitomobi is called by God with a mandate to reach the unreached at all cost and reawaken the church to our responsibilities. Every gallow the enemy have set up, by the word of God today, they will go into the same pits. Be blessed. Mark Gospel, chapter 5, verse 25 to verse 34. It's a beautiful story that you will like. Let's do the New King James Version. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? 32. And he looked around and to see her who had done this. Next verse. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Last verse 34, everybody. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Bear in mind, this is a familiar Bible story, but there are lessons that guarantees your healing in it. Number one thought is the fact that every certain person has issues they are dealing with. A certain woman who had issues, that's what Old King James Version call it, who had issues of blood because every human being you see has got some issues. Some, it could be financial issues, maybe for majority. For so many other people, it could be health issue. Some other people, it could be family issues. But everyone you see got certain issues they need to deal with. And when you are desperate to solve a problem, you will take some desperate measures. And for this very financially comfortable woman, she saw finance as a defense to give her anything she wants to get out of her issues. And the Bible says she spent all that she has. I don't know how much you've spent. She spent all that she had. She was going to the hospital, paying the bills. The problem remained because the problem was deferring medical solutions. So it became very important to pay attention to her. She spent all her reserves. And I'll tell you the truth. When people's reserves are gone, fear of the future becomes imminent. That was the challenge of the Nigerian nation. When our reserves were being depleted and being spent carelessly, our naira began to fall like a stone falling down from a hill. We will soon have a nation we are proud of. I can hear a good amen. Things will work well. 
So this comfortable sick woman had spent all she had. Today I rebook every point of wastage in your resources. She spent all she had, both savings and regular fees. She spent them all and she was growing worse. I saw a man at Ife teaching hospital, OAU teaching hospital, and this man opened his briefcase and was throwing all the money in the briefcase out there in the air and was shouting in Yoruba language, Owo oju tieloni. Shame to you, money. Shame to you, money. Why? His only son and only child was involved in a fire accident. It was a second degree bond. And they said there's somebody somewhere in one country, they contact the person, pay heavy money, bought ticket, brought team from overseas. The best hands in Nigeria, they pulled them, all of them ran into Ife. Because it's like this child is all I have. He must not die. And they did all they could. The science has trained them. Very painful. Very unfortunate. The boy didn't make it. He died. With all that was invested. So the man opened his briefcase. Because if you have seen a wealthy man, they believe they can get go with anything. They have the money to play with. And he saw that money failed. And he was throwing the remaining money up in the suitcase. And was shouting, money you failed me today. Money you failed me today. But money may fail. Jesus never fails. He will heal you. He will undertake for you. He will fight for you. It doesn't matter the medical history. There is a writer called Jesus. He will rewrite your story. In the name of Jesus. So here this woman spent it all. And at this time she's given up. Because the Bible says as condition grew worse. And I love the beauty of scripture. The Bible says when she had. I don't know what you have heard about Jesus. When she heard about Jesus. Because what you hear informs your behavior. What you hear explains how you will respond. What you hear will determine how you will be able and how far you can trust God to end your stories and give you a new name and a new testimony. She heard. Have you heard anything about Jesus? I have heard about him that he is a healer. I heard about him. He's a savior. I'm a product of people he saved. I can tell you he heals. I've been sick before and he's healed me. I heard he can heal. I heard he can deliver. I heard he can set free. And today is your day. If you hear, you become what you hear. Anything you hear is what you become. That's a faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word. What have you heard about Jesus? And don't forget you are in the conflict of many hearings. Because when you are hearing about Jesus, you are also hearing the medical implication of your situation. You are also hearing the traditional understanding of your situation. You are hearing different things you got a choice to make. What will be your choice today? To hear what Jesus says about your situation. One of our members many years ago, still our member live in America today. They were here many, many years ago. They got married. It was five years into their marriage. No child, nothing. They went everywhere. They were so frustrated because the, the husband has come from a family that didn't have enough understanding. We're putting pressure on the wife as though the wife must manufacture a child. Bless are you when your in-law are very peaceful. I didn't hear your amen. amen. And all of you in the house today who have become father-in-law, mother-in-law, please be kind to your son and daughter. Um, is it in-law? We'll call them now. Please be kind to them. Don't be a very distractive father-in-law. 
Don't be a difficult mother-in-law. Let your children call you blessed. So they were so worried and they came and were talking in the office. And I said, do you know what I'm saying? I said, I see you in America. And I see you having three children. And as soon as you arrive in America, you're conceived. Even without any support, without any aid. He said, eh. I said, yes. I said, to try and go to America. <laughs> and like a joke, they got a visa. The family moved to America. They arrived. And the following month, she was pregnant. <laughs> and today, they have three children. And when I was in America, they asked me a question in their house. and said, but why did God ask you that we should go to America before we conceive? I said, there are lands at times that reject men. They have done too many things that there's no how anybody in that lineage will break that limitations. Have you remember Jesus Christ prayed for a man who was blind and he asked the man after prayer, do you see? He said, I see men like trees. And Jesus picked the hand of the man and took him out of that city. Are you hearing me? Took him to the border of that city and crossed the border and prayed for him again. He said, now I can see. He said, fine, go back now. Because people thought you wouldn't see. So go back and show them you can see. Anybody understanding the word of God? Today you will see. Today you will hear. Today you will be healed. Every system in the land where you live that resists you, that resistance will be broken. In the name of Jesus. There are cities that bless men. This city you live in will bless you. This city you are worshipping in will bless you. She heard the healer is passing by. She heard he would turn sorrow to joy. He's come to town. She heard what must you do with what you hear about Jesus. I love another man in scripture who also went completely completely out of order because of what she had. The man we all call blind Bartimaeus. She saw too many, he had too many footsteps going on and began to ask them, what's going on here? They said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is passing by. The man adjusted his voice and arranged himself, said to himself, today is the day. He shouted, they shut him down. Bible says he shouted the more. Will you be willing to shout more? Tell your neighbor you can keep me quiet today. Today is my day. You can close my mouth. I'm going to speak loud. I'm going to scream until my matter get to God's attention. Today, he shouted more. And when the master sent for him, you need to double check how blind men run. They told him, be of good cheer. The master have heard your voice. He sent for you. That's it. He cast off the garment and began to run. And I asked again, how do blind people run? They will run climbing every obstruction on their path, including human obstructions. Why? His voice has reached the master. I believe somebody's voice will reach the attention of the master today. So the woman spoke to herself, make up her mind. And when she got there, a weak woman who had been losing blood for 12 years, I wonder how strong she would be. But last push. Say to anybody, make the last push. Make the last push. You've tried many things. It's not working. Try one more time. Make the last push. She pushed through the crowd. And as she pushed through the crowd, I'm sure there'll be very touchy people in the crowd. Leave me alone. Why are you pushing me? Say, I'm sorry, man. Look at her smelly woman. He says, okay. This process is to end the smell. This process is to end the pain. This process is to make all the difference. I'm going to push my way. Tell us I'm pushing my way. I'm pushing my way. I'm pushing my way through until I can touch the aim of his garment. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm weak. I'm tired, but I'm not stopping. 
I'm weak, I'm tired, but I'm pushing through the crowd. It look at time is going, everybody has gone ahead of me. It's like this pain will kill me. Though I'm in pain, I will keep pushing until I touch him. Stop giving up so soon. Stop giving up so soon. Please don't. One more push. Though weak, she pushed through. Though hopeless, she pushed through. I imagine the many thought of her mind and the devil telling her, you've been through hospital. This church thing will not make a difference. Doctor say you can make it. See, you're going to die with this sickness, with this shame. is a lie. Today is the end of that sickness. Today is the end of that affliction. Today is the end of those crises around you. Just one more push. She pushed through with all human complaints. When you are looking for something from God, please don't listen to distractors around you. Because this lady smells. Well, she was not going to start listening to, why are you smelling like that? Don't you have perfume? See the way you are smelling. Say, don't worry. I'm pushing through what will solve the whole problem. I need to get this done. And she pushed her way and touch. Wow. Great crowd. Great body contact. Different state of mind. Great people. Everybody. Great touches. Everyone was touching him because Peter said to us that there were so many people around you. How can you say would touch me? So there are some casual touches. Is that okay? There are some casual body contact. There are some casual touch here and there. And a great crowd. So there is body to body. And this weak woman had pushed through and touched. And Jesus says, who touched me? He doesn't look logical to say, who touched me? Because there were too many close people and there were too many body contact. I'm sure the body of Judas Iscariot also was rubbing on Jesus as they moved. But nothing happened to him. I'm sure Thomas Didymus, the professional doubter, was in the same meeting, in the same crowd, and he was also having a body contact with Jesus. But nothing happened to him. It didn't cure his doubt. It didn't make any difference to him. There are other people waiting for special attention it's at my level i can't be struggling in the crowd jesus know how important i am he will come see me after his service today and then he will pray for me all those guys were all around but one woman who had who understood the healing power of god comes by faith and not by association those are people who know you, who are close to you, and they are still sick. You understand what I'm saying here? There are people who know you, who are close to you, and yet their problems remain. Because they become so familiar with you, they can see you speaking for God. They see you speaking as somebody they know. And as long as that runs, healings can take place. For this woman... I don't care who knows me here. <laughs> I don't care who doesn't know me here. But something is very clear in my heart. This healing service I have come for is the end of this sickness in my body. Is the end of this trouble in my body. Is the end of spending on medication. Is the end of going around the hospital back and forth. This is one service that is raised for me to get me out of this sickness and out of this trouble. So wherever you are, online or on site here, let your heart begin to speak to yourself. This is the service that end my sickness. This is the service that end my affliction. This is the service that end this disease in my body. This is the service that restores my health. If you keep saying that, this is the service that after this service, I will sleep well. I will rest well. I will have peace of mind. My sleep will be sweet. I will no longer be harassed in my sleep, in my thought, in my body. I'll be emotionally healed. I'll be physically healed. And God will touch every part of my body. This is my service. I don't know about my neighbor, but for me, 
this is the service of my healing. So don't care too much about the crowd. Don't care too much about those who are running you down and describing how you have terrible body odor, mouth odor, disorder, that odor is ending today. I can hear you well. It's ending today. It began one day, it must end one day. And today is the day it's ending. In the name of Jesus. She touched. Jesus knew something left him. The disciples were still trying to explain the common sense to say, Master, this thing you are talking cannot happen. Jesus said, listen, somebody touch me. Who touched me? The woman came finally. I did so. And Peter's theory and theology changed. You mean you did? You this weak woman? looking tired and dying you did yes sir i touched with a difference i didn't touch because it was people just gathering i touched with an understanding i touched in faith jesus looked at the woman and said daughter your faith somebody says that say your faith has made you whole your faith has make you well. Faith has a purchasing power. Faith can buy you healing if you trust God. Faith has purchasing power. Faith in God can take away shame from you. Faith has purchasing power. Faith in God can turn your stories around. Faith has purchasing power. Faith in God can straighten twisted bones. Faith has purchasing power. Faith in God can end every disease in your body. Faith in God can change your life and story. If you will believe him today, do you believe? Faith. Because that is the only reference Jesus could make. Whatever you've heard about Jesus... Powered in faith, we do the unimaginable. Daughter, be of good share. Your faith brings your healing. Now is your turn. We live to talk of the testimony of this woman. And there are several biblical testimony of the mighty healing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 30, verse 2 and 3. Oh Lord my God, I cried out to you, and what did you do? You healed me. So what must you do to be healed today? Talk to me, somebody. What should you do to be healed today? Cry out. Don't be sociable about your sickness. Cry out. I'm in pain. Heal me, Lord. I'm troubled. Heal me, Lord. Cry out. He will hear you. Look at the next verse 3. Oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You know that the sickness was killing me. Is that right? Sending me to the grave. But you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Am I talking to anybody here today? By the grace of God, you will not go down. Your health will improve. You have life in your body. In the mighty name of Jesus. So cry out. And the Lord will heal. Jeremiah 17 verse 14. Heal me O Lord. And I shall be healed. That's faith. Save me. And I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Lord heal me of this discharge in my body and I will be healed heal me of this foul smell and I will be healed heal me of these heart conditions and I will be healed anybody say that to himself heal me of this delay in having babies 
The doctor talk of Omona imbalance. The doctor talk of this or that. Lord, heal me of these imbalances and let there be a miracle in my body. Heal me, oh God, of this pain on my back. Heal me, oh God, of deafness. I'm losing my hearing. Lord, heal me and I will be healed. Heal me, oh God, of every sign of arthritis. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. What are you going to say to him? Heal me, oh God, of this my eyesight heal me of glaucoma of uh, which is the other one that has to do with the eyes cataract heal me oh god and i will be healed heal me oh god of asthma and i will be healed there is life in his name we trust that you've been blessed by this message preached by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday at the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated, Oloruru Ojo Ibadan. Or watch our services online via the Men of Isaka Vision Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can also listen to us on MIVradio.com. For inquiries, please call 0808 085 4818 or send an email to mivmandate2010 at gmail.com. God bless you.